Today's scripture text is going to be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the scripture reads, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that it exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your word. We're so thankful for an opportunity to study your word and to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus. God, we ask that you would strengthen us, minister to us. God, empower us, Lord, through your word. And God, we be careful to give your name all the praise, all the glory and honor. Lord, I pray that as I speak today, you would speak through me, address concerns and issues that we all deal with. And Lord, we love you. We thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. For the time that we have together today, I want to talk to you from the thought, let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> you know, um, one of the things that, that I found myself this week really wrestling with were some battles, some battles, and if I were honest, really for the last couple of weeks, just been battling different things and uh, have encountered different challenges. And these challenges uh, have been um, making me, at some point, to some degree, even question uh, my commitment and my level of, of authority in God. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited today about this message because it's going to address, I think, some things that not only have I been dealing with, but I believe there's some things that you too have been dealing with, where maybe there have been some battles that have been taking place. And perhaps these battles that you have been uh, engaged in, you feel as though you have not been getting the victory. You feel like you've been getting your head whooped. But I want you to know today that God is fighting for us. Yes. He is fighting on our behalf. And all we have to do is get in agreement yes. with God. Because can I tell you something about my Heavenly Father? He is undefeated. <laughs> Anyone that have challenged him, anything that have come against him has fallen, yes. praise God, and it's no different when it comes to you. God is fighting for you. He's fighting on your behalf. So today, what we're talking about today is walking in the authority that God has given to us. Amen. Because, see, it's important for me to understand that the authority that God has given to me is something that I must operate in, is something that I must walk out, and is not something that the enemy is just going to lay down and let me have it. But i got to be willing to fight. Authority is the power or the right delegated to settle a matter. See, God has given you authority. He's given you the right to settle matters. And those things that have been challenging you, coming against you, that have been bogging you down in your mind, do you know those are matters that must be settled with the authority that God has given to you? And that's good news today. And this authority can only be experienced and lived out through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And so I must be born again. I must be a believer in Jesus to walk out that authority. So authority will often be challenged by an enemy. Authority will often be challenged by an enemy. And if we were honest today, not only would enemies challenge our authority, but people that may be closest to us that we may consider to be allies would challenge that authority because the enemy would use these individuals. So today our text this morning is coming from the book of 2 Corinthians. And this, this particular book, so, so that I can give you some context of this scripture that we're about to uh, drill down into today. Uh, the Apostle Paul planted this church in a, in a town called Corinth. And when he planted this church, 
um, th this church was a thriving church, was a blessed church, but then there were some issues that came up in this church, and one of the issues that came up were, was that there were people that challenged Paul's authority. They challenged him, and they wanted to dis they wanted to dismiss him and his authority because they wanted to take control. They wanted to seize the church. And so, and that's no different with, with the challenges that you're dealing with in your mind. The enemy wants to seize territory in your mind that belongs to you. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is resident in you, and the enemy wants to try and claim uh, um, some of that ground in your mind because if you let the enemy in for a little bit, he'll try to take over. Uh, the old saints would say, if you let the devil ride, he'll drive. Yes, he <laughs> Praise God. And so I, I got to be at a place where I understand where the enemy wants to try and take authority and take control of, of, of my mind. And so I have to be intentional about walking in my authority. And so the Apostle Paul uh, wrote the letter to the, to the church at Corinth, the first letter he wrote to them. Uh, and, and basically what he was doing was defending his authority. And as he defended his authority, it became an issue that he couldn't just write a letter. He had to go in person and visit these people. And so he, his letter was bold and his letter was, was, was cutting and his letter was with, with authority. But when he got there, they were surprised to see some of the people that had not met Paul were surprised to see the little man that he was. Because Paul was not a very good speaker. Paul was not a very impressive uh, looking individual. Paul did not have a lot of money. In many cases, Paul was homeless. And so people tried to discredit Paul and started asking for Paul's credentials. Well, they made a mistake right there because Paul was more credible than anyone else in that church. And anyone else that tried to, he called them super apostles. They tried to undermine Paul's authority. And so this is what Paul says, I might not be able to speak uh, with skill, but I'm not unskilled in knowledge because I have experience with God. I have come to know him. I met Jesus. I've had revelation. I've had all these experiences with God that you know nothing about. And so Paul told uh, the people, he said, listen, you have to be careful by basing authority on what people can see. You have to be careful by allowing men to discredit you with and you with with credentials uh, that are man's credentials. And I relate to that because I don't have a seminary degree and I've not been through. Uh, I haven't been to uh, Jerusalem and and and, <laughs> and and there are all type of uh, things that I lack. But one thing I don't lack is experience with God. Amen. And, and when God appoints you, can't no one remove you. Amen. Because man will try and discredit you. Man will try and, and break you down. And, and the, the demons in this world will try to make you think that you are crazy. But I come to tell you that you have authority given to you by God that can't no devil in hell remove. And so I have to, t I have to mount up. And I have, to, I have to take hold of the authority that Jesus laid his life down Amen. for me to enjoy. So this is why Paul uh, starts off in this verse four and says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's not based on my credentials. Paul said, you want to see a letter of recommendation? Because they said, send us a letter of recommendation. He said, you are my letter of recommendation. You are the proof of my apostleship. You are the people that, uh, that, that are, have come to faith in Jesus as a result of me preaching the gospel to you. So don't you let no man try and discredit, uh, discredit you and make you think that who you are is anything less than the child of God. Amen. Amen. So Paul uh, leads us to this life application challenge today. And the challenge is, how do I walk in authority when I'm under attack? And see, here's the thing that I want us to really get down and settle into. Maybe you have been experiencing where you have been pressed in your mind and, and you've had felt this extreme desire and luring toward a certain type of sin. Or maybe you've been in a place where it looks like that, that every, everything is just coming at you. One thing or another is just bombarding you. What I want you to know, it could be that you are under a spiritual attack. It's important for me to understand when I'm being attacked and it's spiritual. 
It's very important because sometimes we're going through things in life and we just assume that it's just a result of just some difficulty that I'm going through. And we don't realize that there's an enemy that's on assignment that has sent a demonic uh, spirit to, to test me and to work on me and to try and wear me out. So our question is, how do I walk in authority when I'm under attack? So our first thought, number one, is prepare for and be aware of the spiritual warfare. Write that down. Prepare for and be aware of the spiritual warfare. Now, this is a topic that is not something that we can really, really flesh out on a Sunday morning. So what I want to challenge every person to do is take this growth guide and really spend time at, at, at praying. We're in the middle of, of fasting. L at least most of us are fasting. Praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> most of us are fasting. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And, and for those of us that are not fasting, bless you. Bless you. Amen. Just, just, just don't invite me out to eat while you're not fasting. Amen. Praise God. Because I, I don't want to be tempted. Amen. Praise God. But in the midst of this fast, what you can do is you can bring some of your, current, your concerns to the Lord and he can help you. He can help you realize what's really going on. So this is why we say prepare for and be aware of spiritual warfare. Notice what he says in verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You know what, what I could uh, show you that, that, that we see here? It says for the weapons of our warfare. You know what that's suggesting today? That we go through warfare. Mm -hmm. We go through warfare. And I know that being a Christian, maybe some of us think that life is just about tiptoeing through the tulips and that things are just going to be easy breezy. But the reality of it is that we have to know that there is a such thing as spiritual warfare. If I know that there's a such thing as spiritual warfare, then what does that teach me? It teaches me to be at a place where I'm preparing for it. See, if you're not going through spiritual warfare right now, get ready for it because it's coming. Amen. It's been said that trouble is like home. You're either leaving from it, on the way to it, or currently in it. <laughs> trouble is always there. But you know what? The beautiful thing about trouble being there is that God says we have authority. And that we're able to take authority over this stuff when it does come our way. So here's the thing. I like this. How can we be powerless when God is all powerful? See, we have the power to overcome these attacks that come our way. We don't have to just lay down and just accept it and just take it. No, we have the power to overcome it. Because he says it's for the weapons. Somebody shout weapons. weapons. Yeah, I like that. The weapons. How many of you all possess a weapon? Let me see. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. So some of you may be, may be afraid to let us know that you got a weapon. Amen. But some of us, we got some weapons in our house, right? We, we got a nine millimeter or we got a revolver or some of us old school, we got a bat. Praise God. Because if somebody come up in here, we're going to go to bat. Amen. We're going to let them know, hey, hey, this, this, you, don't, you, don't, you don't belong here. Praise God. See, but in the kingdom of God, see, those are carnal weapons right there, a bat or, or, or your fist or your mouth where you can call somebody or cuss somebody out or, or gun. Those are natural weapons. But the Bible teaches us that there is a such thing as spiritual weapons. Mm, that gets me excited because spiritual weapons, it's important for me to understand this. I cannot fight a natural battle with, I can't fight a natural, a spiritual battle with natural means. I have to understand I have some weapons. Somebody shout, I'm packing. Yeah, yeah, see, see, you are packing. You have authority, you have power in you that you don't even realize. So the objective today is to, is to stir you up to help you to understand that when mess comes your way, you don't have to put up with it. Amen. You don't have to take it, but you can rise up, you can mount up and walk in your God-given authority. Yes, Praise God. See, authority was given to us in Eden. God spoke to Adam and he says, I give you dominion. 
I give you the authority to, to, to take care of and to govern this land. But then Satan crept in and what did he do? He snatched the authority from Adam and Eve and they were living under the power of sin. But that's not the end of the story because God told Satan that the, the woman would have a seed, a, a seed and this man will, you will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. Don't you know that Jesus crushed the head of Satan? That Jesus, the Bible says that he rose with all power in his hands, that he had all authority in his hands. But do you know anyone that's in Christ have that same authority? The scripture says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall also quicken our mortal bodies. So, you know, some of the mess that we're dealing with, we don't have to deal with it. We can take authority. Somebody shall take authority. That's right. So watch this. Don't address spiritual matters with carnal arms. Here you showing up to a, a gunfight with a knife. That doesn't make sense, right? Nor does it make sense to show up to a spiritual battle trying to use natural means. And that's a lot of times where we find where we missing opportunity. We're, we're, we're looking for natural means to address a spiritual matter. Yes. If I went to the doctor and said, Doc, I got this issue. I've identified it as a spiritual matter. Now I want you to give me some, something to help me with it. The doctor can't help you. Why? Because that's beyond his expertise. Praise God. But I can go to God and to ask him to show me how to walk this thing out. Notice what it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, be sober. Shout, somebody shout, be sober. be sober. Come on, shout, be sober. be sober. Be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now, here's another sign that I am under attack. Anytime... I, I, I feel like I want to get away from my godly relationships. That is the enemy trying to lure me off, trying to cut me off, trying to separate me from the fold. And I have to be on alert because the enemy will use anything to cause me to be separated from the fold. Why? Because if you notice how animals of, uh, of uh, predator animals, how they, how they stalk their victims. They looking for the weak, they looking for the weary, and they looking for the wounded. The weak, weary, and wounded can be protected if they are in the midst, praise God, of the herd. Somebody shout, don't let go of the herd. Yeah, because see, what the enemy wants to do is he wants to separate me. He wants to get me scattered so he can pounce on me. So I have to recognize when the enemy's trying to separate me from my blessed place. He's trying to lure me out so that I can be fair game, easy game. Because let me tell you something. You don't have to give up ground in your mind. You don't have to give up ground in your mind. You can take a stand and say, no, devil, you're not coming up in here. This is my house. Praise God. Anybody ever had, ever had to have that conversation with your kids? They was acting crazy. They were challenging your authority. And, and they, they were telling you what they were going to do. And you had to stand up and assert your authority. A shout out to the parents that, that don't let their kids run their house. Mm. Amen. Got three people. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It's important for you to govern your home. This is this is the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. I like the way Joshua said. He said he, he said uh, whatever you decide to do, whether you serve God, serve God, or serve Baal, serve Baal. But as for me yeah. and my house, yeah. we will serve God. Uh -huh. Because what he was saying is that I have authority. I have jurisdiction. See, when Jesus rose from the grave, he gave power to us. Yes. And that power is authority. Yes. We don't have to lay down to what the enemy is doing. So here's a home study question that I want you to ponder this week. Are there spiritual battles that you've been trying to fight with natural means? Maybe there's, there are issues on your job and, and you think that it's the person, but really it's the enemy using that individual. See, if, I, if we had time today, I would talk about how the, the things that we don't wrestle battle against flesh and blood. 
But we battle against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Maybe we'll get into that next week. Praise, praise God. But notice what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. He says, for the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're not fleshly, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So number two, here's what we find out persistently speak the word. I'm talking about today, how do I walk in authority when I'm under attack? Are you under attack today? Has the enemy been bombarding your mind? Has he been trying to make you feel like you're good for nothing and life is not worth it and just end it all? Or have he been working on you telling you that your wife is not good or your husband doesn't love you or, or, or maybe the people at that church don't care about you or, or maybe you need to just leave that job and quit even though you don't have another job in place? <laughs> Praise God. Well, persistently speak the word. Notice what Paul says. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. A stronghold is an area in my mind where the enemy has been telling me a lie and I've been believing it. It is where I am held captive in my mind and I don't realize what's going on. Well, I'm going to tell you that that's a stronghold today. And the word of God teaches us that when we begin to speak the word, that stronghold starts to break down. Somebody say break it down. Break it down. Yeah, break it down. See, those strongholds, it's like a fortress and it's built up where it, it initially, watch this, y'all. A stronghold initially when it's set up, it's set up so that it can protect you. But then once, it ha once you built it up, then it becomes a prison. So instead of it providing protection, it causes you to be imprisoned by a thing because the word of God it hasn't penetrated that thing because it's set up in your life. And I want you to know something today that the scripture says that the way Jesus handled uh, being attacked by the enemy, the Bible says that every time he the enemy brought something to Jesus, Jesus said it is written. When was the last time some some devil came and whispered some stupid stuff to you and you opened up your mouth and said it is written? Yeah, yeah. When the enemy comes and say that you're sick and that you're going to die, you ought to open up your mouth and say, it is written. When the enemy comes and tell you that you are good for nothing, you ought to open up your mouth and say, it is written. When the enemy tells you that you are, are, are just a loser and, and that you ought to just give up and you don't possess authority, you're dumb or stupid or ugly or whatever the enemy tries to say, you ought to open up your mouth and say, it is written. The scripture says that I am beautifully and wonderfully made, that I am somebody. That's why we sung the song today, that I am who you say I am, not what other people say about me. Man, look, if I was, if I became what people said about me, you know what I would not be? I wouldn't be standing up here, first of all, because there have been people that say that you don't deserve to be a pastor, or you don't deserve to be a man of God. What about the things you did? What about the mistakes you made? But you know what I say to that? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because what I'm here to tell you today is what Paul is saying here is that you have to pull down those strongholds. The word pull down means to demolish. Yeah, that, that, that there are things in you, built up in your mind that it's not going to go away overnight. You're going to have to demolish it. You're going to have to take time working on that thing. You have to take. You have to imagine that it's a big old boulder, and you got a big uh, hammer in your hand, and you beating on that rock. And the first time you hit it, nothing happened. And then the second time you hit it, nothing happened. You're speaking the word. You're declaring and decreeing what thus says the Lord, and pink, nothing happened. But I'm here to tell you today that God said in His word. Jeremiah 23 verse 29 he said is not my word like fire he says is not my word like a hammer when you take that hammer and you begin to boom hit that thing with the word of God you take the word and you boom hit that thing and nothing's happening but I promise you if you continue to hit that thing with the word it's gonna crumble Amen. praise God you ought to shout let's get ready to rumble yeah see because I came to fight today 
today. Yes, sir. You ever woke up one morning ready to fight? Yes, because you knew that devil was waiting on you. You didn't get out your bed casually and start looking at your phone, flipping through, looking at Facebook. No, because you, you got up ready to fight. Amen. See, because we, we, we serve a real God Amen. who's given us authority over this thing. Amen. And you don't have to let the devil just take control of your mind. Amen. This is my mind. Amen. Praise God. I'm not going to let you live in my head rent free. All right. <laughs> you just hanging out in my head. No, you got to go today. Yeah. You cannot stay. The, the depression, you can't stay. Can't stay. Can't stay. Suicide, you can't stay. Right. Low self-esteem, you can't stay. Amen. I got to get up with my mind made up that I'm going to take authority. Yes. You're not just going to hang out in my head. Yes. You just, just, just wake up. Oh, you can, today going to be the bad day today. Oh, what's going to happen today? No, I, to, this is a day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, 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 oh here come that skirt. Here come that skirt. I don't have to look. Yes. Man. Right. Thank you, Lord. I don't have to take a puff. Amen. <laughs> Tell my puff, puff, give. No, no, I don't have to pass me, pass me on by. Amen. 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 Praise God. It's, I got authority. Amen. 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 Praise God. So, so you ought to get ready to go to war. Praise God. Yeah. Hey, man, notice this. The word will expose ways of thinking that's inconsistent with the kingdom. See, because there are things that's going on in our mind and it's just not consistent with what the word says. And so what the word of God will do is that when I filter it through the word, what will happen is that the word of God will say, I, 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 that right there, that's not that's not me. That's not me. I know that's what grandmama said. I, I know I know that's what Uncle, Uncle Cousin Pookie said, but that is not the truth. See, notice what it says in Hebrews 4. It says, for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper. Somebody shout sharper. Sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. See, there are things in me, thank you, sir, that there are things in my mind right now that I don't even realize is inconsistent with God. But it will take the word of God to, to get down into my mind and to begin to, to carve out some stuff. You ever been carved up by the word? Amen. <laughs> You know, I guess I'm the only one. Praise God. I've been carved up by the word where the word came and, and the word came and challenged some of my thinking on some stuff. Well, I thought this is the way, but God says, no, that's not the way. I, I, I called you unto righteousness. I, I know that's how you learned. That's how you learned, but that's not me. Notice, Paul says this. Paul says, you can cast down arguments. Cast down arguments. See, see the thing about it, what was happening is that these people were, were coming up with arguments, uh, trying to claim that Paul was not an apostle. And Paul was telling them, look, you don't have to go to go get to fussing and fighting and bringing guns to church and, and trying to try, trying to you, you ain't going to you gonna respect me. You ain't got to go through all of that. Do y'all know that that kind of stuff happens in church? I know that's a surprise, but folk have shown up to church with guns, ready to fight because they fighting with carnal method. Yeah. And they didn't realize that really Satan behind the scenes laughing. <laughs> Look at you fools. Because see the Bible teaches this. That it says be careful not to devour one another. Because have you ever noticed that the people that are closest to you, those are the ones that can really hurt you. Yes, sir. Yeah, because a lot of times we come to the church or in our families and we're expecting if nobody else got my back, I know they have my back. But it can hurt you when people who you th are, are the closest to you uh, devour you. But this is what the Bible teaches. The Bible says that, man, you can cast down arguments. You can cast, because the enemy, see, the enemy will speak to our minds and he'll work on us and he'll speak to us. And you ever had an internal argument? <laughs> There have been times that suggestions were made to me in my mind, and I said out of my mouth, no, I, that is so stupid. Amen. Why would I go into the store and take that? I have money to buy it. Anybody ever been tempted to just take something off the shelf? Let me just, let me just see what it feels like just to steal. Let me see. Can I tell you, that wasn't you. That was the enemy. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take this. I'm going to see what's going to happen. Like, I can tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> They're going to get you. <laughs> 
And, and he, you were like, man, I don't know what came over me. That was the enemy. You have to resist those thoughts. You have to reject those thoughts. And you have to take authority over those thoughts. Yes. Not by saying dumb stuff, but by saying what the word says. Yes, sir. Well, I got to open up my mouth and decree what the word says. Notice this. I want you to consider this home studies question. How do you respond to problems that persist? Problems that seem like they're not going anywhere. How do you respond to those things? Well, I want to advise you to outlast. I love the way uh, the, our prayer this morning was that, that God is everlasting, which says that he outlasts all of the stuff that we can face. Because here's, here's what's happening. When you're talking about authority, it is a test of who's willing to outlast the other. I was in negotiating with, with uh, some people. I was buying a car, and I was negotiating with them. And, and they were telling me what they couldn't do. <laughs> Anytime a salesman tells you that they can't do stuff, or people in the back office, oh, we can't do that. I always, it, it, they, they told me it was something. I don't want to get into all the details, waste a whole lot of time on it. But it was something that happened in the back office. And, and they told me, sorry, Mr. Campbell, but we cannot do it. This is what I said. I was undeterred by what he said. Couldn't be done. I said, okay, well, let me know who, who to talk to who can do it. Because <laughs> what I understand is, okay, well, you might not be able to do it, but I know somebody going to be able to do it. And I'm going to call and call and, until I get what I'm expecting. Because I understood my position as the customer. You know why I understood my position as the customer? Because I've been in the position... <laughs> <laughs> in the opposite position, <laughs> where the customer came and said, look, I am the customer, and the customer is all right. <laughs> That's authority. You see that? Well, you say, I, I know what belongs to me, and you're going to give it up one way or another. <laughs> if I was gangster, I would say, like, Snoop, we can handle this like some gentlemen. <laughs> or we can get into, okay, let me go. <laughs> Some of us don't know what I'm talking about. That's all right. Amen. <laughs> the third thing that we find out in, in how do I walk in authority when I'm under attack, here's the third thing, is that I must promote the word over every evil thought. I must promote the word over every evil thought. And when I say promote, what I mean by promote is sometimes the word is in lower priority than what I realize. A lot of times when I hear things, I will reduce the word beneath it instead of elevating the word above it. Right. Did you get that? Notice what Paul says. He says, casting down, verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing. Somebody shout every high thing. Every high thing, every high thing that exalts it itself against the knowledge of God. Do you know whenever I don't walk in my God-given authority, you know what I'm doing? I'm exalting that thing above the word of God. I, I'm accepting the word of someone else instead of accepting the word of God. When things come and bad news come my way or some whisper comes into my ear, what I must do is I must consult the word, filter it through the word. Amen. Because the word will prove it whether or not it is uh, from the kingdom of darkness or is it, if it's from God. Yes. So promote the word over every evil thought. Verse 5, casting down imaginations, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And I like this verbiage. He says, bringing every thought. Somebody shout every thought. Every thought. Come on, shout every thought. Every thought. every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That means that every thought I got to bring into captivity. Watch this. Darkness will always attempt, write this down, darkness will always attempt to undervalue the light of God's word, to undervalue it. You have within you, if you are a born again Christian, you have within you the authority of God, the authority of the kingdom. That means that, see, I, we are not of this world. We are in this world, but we are not of it. Amen. So I'm not subject to the limitations of this world. I can literally think beyond what I'm currently experiencing. Thoughts that go unfiltered become unrestrained actions. 
thoughts that go unfiltered become unrestrained actions. So I have to filter my thoughts through the word of God so that I can dis discern whether or not that thought is legitimate. Notice what it says in Proverbs verse 4, chapter 4, verse 23. It says keep. Another translation says guard. Another translation says garrison. Somebody shout guard. guard. Yeah, he says guard your heart. How? With all diligence. That means that I have to be discerning with the things that I allow into my mind. Now, how does it get into my mind? Through my eye gate, through my ear gate, and even when I speak, this is how things get into my mind. I ought to, I ought to perceive thoughts to be like, uh, like, like a, somebody that's coming to my house. If, if somebody knocked on your door at 2 o'clock in the morning, would you walk up to the door and just open it up and say, hey, who's here? Well, how, how would you handle uh, th that intruder, that person? Look, I'm calling them an intruder. It could, it may, could be a person that's just visiting that you know, but at 2 o'clock in the morning, you better call me uh, first before you come knocking on my door. Praise God, because you... <laughs> Amen. But what, what, what I'm saying is I need to, I need to treat that, that thing that's in front of me, I need to treat it, Carefully, right? Here's, here's what God told uh, Cain. The scripture says that Cain got upset when he saw uh, how God regarded the offering of his brother Abel. Y'all remember that story? Yeah, yeah and, and the scripture says that Cain, what happened to Cain? What happened? He, well, he, got, he, got, he, he got angry, right? He, he, can't, he became wroth. He was upset, right? And here's what happened. God approached him and said, Cain, why are you upset? He said, if you resist this thing, if you rule over it, yes. if you have authority over it, exercise your authority over it. Uh -huh. He said, look, sin is at the door. Right. It's, it's, it's crouching uh -huh. at the door. And he said, but if you, if you take authority over it, you'll do well. Yes. You don't have to let it in. Uh -huh. He said, but, but if you don't, then it'll take over your life. It'll rule over you. Uh -huh. Is there anything in your life right now that's ruling over you? You feel like you don't have even an option. You feel defenseless. You feel like you can't stop it. It's just an onslaught coming your way. I'm here to tell you today that if you are a born again believer, you don't have to put up with that. You can take authority over that. By, by what the word says, keep, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issue of life. Home study question, are there areas in your life where the word is not priority, where this thing feels like it's bigger than you? Well, that ought not be. Notice what it says in Isaiah 26, verse 3. It says, thou, you, Lord, will keep him in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him because you trust him. See, when we keep our minds fixed on the things of God, then we can walk in authority. But when, when we start losing ground and we start meditating and thinking on other stuff and, 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 and instead of spending time in the word, instead of building ourselves up, we start just sitting down watching TV or trying to escape the issues of light. Well, we're giving the enemy ground authority that doesn't even belong to him. I always give this example. If you came home later on this afternoon and somebody was sitting on your sofa who you didn't know watching TV, you, you would ask them to leave maybe nicely or you, maybe you get to talking crazy or hollering or screaming or maybe you pull out your gun. I don't know what you would do. But you would, in so many words, demand that they leave. If they decided, well, I'm not going anywhere, where well, you could call the authorities and they would come and remove that person. Why? Because you have authority in your home. Well, it's no different in your spirit. Colossians 3, verse 2 tells us to do this. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Are, are you sitting here today uh, without authority in your life? Because Not because you don't know how to lay hold or possess the authority, but because you are not even a believer. You, you, you haven't surrendered your life to Jesus. 
Well, here's the good news today, that the, that the uh, bondage that you're experiencing, being feeling like you can't escape, God tells us that if you give your life to Jesus, that he gives you uh, access to authority. Access because you become his child. Because the same authority that you have, like I mentioned, if you came home and somebody was sitting on the sofa, if, if you gave your key to someone, you gave them authority. And that same authority that you have, you gave to them. Jesus, the Bible says, snatched the keys of death and the grave, which means he had all authority, all power. And then he was able to then give that authority to those that are his. Our big idea today is that I walk in authority when the word of God stands guard at the gateway of my mind. I walk in authority when the word of God stands at the gateway of my mind. This is why the enemy works overtime to try and get me distracted from the word tries to get me into the place where the word is not priority in my life. See, God has done the heavy lifting. All we have to do is come into agreement with what he's already done. He's already given us authority. He's already given us the power. We just simply need to walk in it. And the baseline of our authority is the word. Is the word of God.